Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be doing fractional distillation of crude oil which is how you get useful products like petrol and diesel from crude oil that we get out of the ground. So at the moment I've got some crude oil in here heating up and we're going to leave that for a few minutes and come back to all this equipment. In the meantime I'm going to explain to you what there is in crude oil. So I've got a beaker of string here which is trying to model what the molecules are like inside crude oil. So if I tip this out, the string is supposed to be the hydrocarbon molecules and we can see that there's all sorts of different sizes of hydrocarbon molecules. They might range from only one carbon atom long to over a hundred carbon atoms long. And when we do fractional distillation of crude oil, what we're essentially doing is sorting out those hydrocarbon molecules into batches or fractions of roughly the same size. So we can do that in the lab and it also happens on a large scale at the oil refinery. And that's how we turn crude oil, which is not very useful, into much more useful substances like petrol and diesel. So it's all about separating the different size molecules in crude oil into fractions of roughly the same size molecule. This is how we carry out fractional distillation of crude oil in the lab. So we've got a flask here with crude oil in and it's been heated by this electric heater and some of those hydrocarbon molecules are going to start to evaporate and pass up the fractionating column. The first hydrocarbon molecules to evaporate will be the smallest chain molecules because they've got the lowest boiling points as they've got less intermolecular forces between them. So as soon as it starts to boil, there'll be the small hydrocarbons passing up here and then they'll hit this cold tube. This is a Liebig condenser which has water passing around it to keep it nice and cold. So those vapours of the hydrocarbons will hit this cold tube and collect in the flask here as a liquid. So this first fraction that we've collected, this first liquid, is going to be the shortest hydrocarbons. If we take that away and heat it for longer, then the next batch will be slightly longer hydrocarbons, take that away and so on. And we can get progressively longer molecules coming out at this end. So then let's now have a look at these hydrocarbons and check that they are the small hydrocarbons that we're expecting. This is the first fraction that we've collected from the crude oil and it certainly looks like it's a short chain hydrocarbon because it's light in colour and it's not very viscous, that means it's really quite runny. So the other thing it should be is flammable. So let's see if we can set fire to what I think should be a short hydrocarbon. And there we go. So that's really quite flammable. So I'm quite convinced that it's a short hydrocarbon. It's got all the properties that I would expect. We're now going to have a look at how fractional distillation happens on a large scale at the oil refinery. This is the oil refinery where the crude oil arrives either by ship or by pipeline. And it's here where we're going to separate it into different fractions of similar sized molecules to turn it into useful products. One of those large structures on the previous photo would be the fractionating column and as the crude oil enters the fractionating column it is heated up. The heat causes the crude oil to turn into gas or vapours and these vapours start to rise up the column. Now because the fractionating column is such a tall structure and it's only been heated at the bottom it means the top of the column is cooler than the bottom of the column. So as the vapours rise up the column, they get cooler and cooler, and when they cool back down to their boiling point, they turn back from a gas into a liquid. In other words, the vapours start to condense. The longer hydrocarbons with the highest boiling point condense first, because it doesn't have to cool down much to get down to their higher boiling point, and these exit lower down the column. The shorter hydrocarbons with the lower boiling points condense and exit higher up the column. So out of each pipe coming out of the side of the fractionating column, you've got fractions of hydrocarbons of different sizes with the shortest ones at the top and the longest ones towards the bottom. And these are useful products. So the first one at the top, refinery gases, 
That could be bottles, gas that you've used on a barbecue, or if you've ever stayed in a caravan, they would have a gas bottle. Second one down, petrol. I think we all know what that's used for. Now, the third one, naphtha, is what we call a feedstock. And that means it's a useful chemical that's used by the chemical industry to make other things from. It's a raw material for the chemical industry. The next one down, kerosene, is the fuel that aircraft like aeroplanes use. Then diesel can be used in some cars, also in lorries and trains. Lubricating oil is the engine oil that's added to car engines to reduce friction and stop them wearing out. And then fuel oil is used in ships and large containers that uh, cross the sea with lots of goods in. And then the last one, bitumen, that's used to repair roads and also some roofs on uh, houses and buildings are also repaired by bitumen it's a sticky dark colored substance like tar so make sure for your exam you learn all six points of how to explain fractional distillation test yourself with a piece of scrap paper can you write down all six if not replay the video and watch that part again thank you for watching